Brigadier Sayyid Ahmad Ali, the former Pro Vice Chancellor of the Aligarh Muslim University, opined that the society carries a completely wrong notion about the Muslim community which needs to be corrected. At the very outset, let me clarify that I am no authority to speak on Islam. Having been to a convent school all through my schooling and to Allahabad University and Madras University and Osmania University where I learned everything except Islam. But whatever I am going to speak about is what I have seen, felt, heard from my friends, from my relatives, from my elders. And out of that experience that I am going to speak to you about things which have a very wrong notion about Islam. And I thought that who else can rectify that except a soldier of the Indian Army. I have been from the Kumau Regiment, the same regiment where Dr. Vilas, Colonel Vilas was also there. He was much senior to me. But I had the honor of being commissioned into the 15th Battalion of Kumau Regiment. I have seen all wars which the regiment has fought post-1971 war. I have fought the Kargil War. I have fought the Sri Lankan operation as part of the IPKF. So I am anything but a cleric to speak on religion. But I shall be also cheating myself if I say that I know nothing of Islam. In all these years of my life, I have only been observing, reading and writing. And mostly since I went to Aligarh Muslim University, I got a lot of clarifications. You must be wondering what an infantryman was doing in a huge university like Aligarh Muslim University. That's also, I have not understood till date why I was sent there, why the government sent me there. But when I left the university, the AMU became number one university in India as per the Q3 ranking. Now, coming back to the topic, a notion has been created where the image of a Muslim is that of a bearded man putting on a skull cap and he is anything but carrying a stinger missile on his shoulders or wearing that Pathani dress and about to launch an attack on somebody. This is the general notion prevailing overall. The TV news, the media news, it's full of words like Mullah, Mujahideen, Taliban, Kafir, Sharia and things like that. You must be sick of hearing these words. Have you ever pondered what are these meaning? What does it stand for? I stand before you today to clarify some of these things which I have read, which I have understood and how it should be correctly interpreted and how it came about. Ladies and gentlemen, most of my community members were ignorant and continue to be ignorant about the teachings of Islam. And this is the ignorance which the rest of the community is paying, paying the price for. Muslim nations are suffering most you will agree with me, Muslim nations are suffering most at the hands of terrorism. There is hardly a Friday which goes, goes without bombing in a mosque in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria and these countries. You have been hearing and reading about it. Terrorism has taken a violent form and somehow it got linked with the religion per se, which shouldn't have been. But unfortunately, that is the truth of life. Therefore, to understand what is Islam, I shall start about the first and the foremost document of Islam and that is the Holy Quran. Unless we know what contains in Holy Quran, we will always go wrong in our interpretations of what Quran is about. Holy Quran is nothing but it was a book revealed by God to the Prophet Muhammad. It is in other words, as Islamic jurisprudence. It is a way of guiding a Muslim how to lead his life. The next importance, in importance to Holy Quran are the Shariat and the Sunnah. The Sunnah or Sunnat as they call it in India are those things which the Prophet himself practiced. So any good Muslim feels 
that whatever Prophet did, if I can do it, it's a good thing. <coughs> that is Sunnah. And the Sharia came as a result of what the laws were molded and, and designed for a Muslim to follow those laws. It came by words of mouth from the Prophet. It, it came through Quran, which is the main jurisprudence. But a combination of what the Prophet said and what the Quran contained resulted in the creation of Sharia. Now the Quran contains two types of verses. One is called the Mutashabihat and the other is called Muhkamat. Muhkamat is like a direction. It cannot be changed. God wants it to be done like that, do it like that. But where the doubt arises is the Mutashabihat. Mutashabihat was free to interpretation and people started interpreting the way they understood. You know, no two people see this thing in the same light. You will agree with me. And the best way is the communication. When I communicate with you, when you narrate my communication to somebody else, you may narrate something else. And that is what has happened to the ayats which are known as mutashabihat, that they are different interpretations of the same ayat. And that is where the conflict and the disagreement started. Wherever the God has given clear-cut direction, there is no disagreement on that. Now, what is Sharia? Sharia was designed as a law which will be prevalent on everybody, irrespective of whether you are head of state, whether you are the king, or whether you are an ordinary man. It is, in, in Arabic, if it is translated in English, it is called the way, the path. Sharia shows you the path of a good living. It was developed so that the Muslims can follow this as the guiding principles of their lifestyle. But unfortunately, it not, did not happen. Certain kings, certain rulers got themselves exempted from Sharia. The latest which you must have read uh, about few days back, when a certain crown prince has got himself exempted out of a murder charge. This was not the purpose of Sharia. So please remember that Sharia, the first cardinal principle of Sharia was that it will be applied toto with everybody wherever you are, whatever you are, irrespective of your status or dignity. Now, in the light of Sharia, certain Muslim ulema, as we call them, or thinkers, started passing fatwas. You must be hearing this word, fatwa, fatwa aya hai, fatwa hai. What happened is that they, they interpreted the Sharia and they gave sometimes correct fatwa, sometimes wrong fatwa also. And it is the wrong fatwa which has damaged the image of Islam most. It should not have come, but just because that man thought that it is like this, he interpreted it like that. Then a very frequent word, fundamentalist, you must be reading. This came up in the light of all the events that happened in the West and also in India. People started linking Islam with fundamentalism. Far from it. Islam by definition means a religion of peace. Islam in Arabic means peace. And that is what the seminar we are organizing here for. We want a universal peace. You want a universal peace. And that is why the Islam word was coined by the Prophet. Those who described the followers of Islam as fundamentalists are absolutely wrong. I cannot call myself as a fundamentalist, nor can I call anybody who has got a beard as a fundamentalist. Fundamentals of Islam are based on peace. Now, some of the questions which, which must be haunting your mind is, was Islam spread by force? This is a very frequent subject which people talk about. Or, is Islam a religion of coercion? Or, is it compatible with the modern life? Can we lead this, pre practice this religion in the wake of modernism also? These are the questions which haunt anybody's mind, including mine. But let me answer your first question, that Islam was never spread by force or coercion. This is contrary to what has been written or made to believe that Islam was spread through the sword. If it was so, in the Prophet's own lifetime, when he did the last Hajj, 100,000 people attended that Hajj. 
if he had forced people in his little lifetime, why would 100,000 people join him to circumnavigate around the Kaaba? Muslims have ruled India, as you know, for nearly 650 years. If it was forced, then India would not have seen 80% non-Muslims today. The religion was never forced. Muslims constitute over 2 billion in the world out of 8 billion population. Only 22% of Muslims are Arabs. Rest are all spread. 30% live in America and Europe. Did you hear ever that somebody was killed for not embracing Islam? It is only those fanatics, few fanatics like Taliban or their followers who created that image that it was spread by force. You see, why do we all go to Mazars today? We all believe in Mazars. It's because those peers, those saints practiced peace, they practiced brotherhood, they practiced love. If they were the real followers of Islam, as per this definition, they would not have been, they would not have been worshipped as they are being worshipped even today.